Hey everybody, Joey, the People Firearms Academy in St. Charles, Illinois. Today I've got uh, some news for you, pretty good news. Okay, before I get into this video, I do want to share with you guys, we are, are a firearms training company in St. Charles, and if you ever need any kind of training, whether it be basic pistol, concealed carry, advanced concealed carry, rifle, we do a lot of tactical training, and we got a shoot house opening up this spring. Stop on in for some classes. We'd love to see you up there. Today, the circuit court in Effingham County heard a lawsuit filed by Tom DeVore with roughly 864 different applicants against JB's House Bill 4471, the assault weapons, assault weapons bill and uh, magazine capacity bill. And thanks to Judge Joshua Morrison, was granted a temporary restraining order. So here's the here's a small run up to this. All right, so just details of the of the case. Uh, we all know what D four seventy one bans. You know, basically any kind of assault weapon, uh, as well as magazines that uh, are over you know, 15 rounds, have threaded barrels, et cetera, et cetera. Amongst a host of other things. Watch my, some of my other videos. I'll link to them below on that. A couple of days ago, Tom DeVore went to court in Effingham County and filed a lawsuit against J.B. Pritzker, Kwame, Ra <clears throat> Kwame Raul, Emmanuel Christopher Welch, Speaker of the House, and Don Harmon as Senate President regarding D-471. No, when D-471 was being pushed through or after it was signed don Harmon says see you in court well guess what court battle number one uh was the other day <clears throat> judge morrison judge morrison said that he would deliver a uh, ruling by friday at the end of the day today is friday at the end of the day and he did uh in fact grant that temporary restraining order they will be back in court on February 1st, 9.30 a.m. down in Effingham County. Let me read you a couple things in his opinion that Judge Morrison ruled on. So, uh, number one, the plaintiffs possess a clear right in need of protection. <clears throat> the plaintiffs argue that House Bill 5471 impairs their fundamental right to uh, bear arms and that the law enacted in violation of the Illinois Constitution. In his opinion, he cited Caladimos v. Morton Grove, which uh, took place in 1984, and wrote that when Caladimos was issued in 1984, the courts had yet to develop their current jurisprudence regarding gun rights. However, subsequent uh, to significant jurisprudence, which occurred after 1984, the Illinois Supreme Court considered an ordinance which taxed the purchases of certain ammunition. In its analysis, the Illinois Supreme Court made it clear that strict scrutiny applies to alleged constitutional violations of regulations, regulations such as House Bill 5471. The court finds that plaintiffs, in fact, have a uh, constitutional fundamental right that is subject to strict scrutiny and is protected by the Constitution of Illinois and the Constitution of the United States. Number two, plaintiffs will suffer irreparable injury. Plaintiffs are being immediately and irreparably harmed each day in which their fundamental right to bear arms is being denied and that this harm is continuing in nature. When a violation of constitutional rights has been alleged, a further showing of irreparable injury is not required. Although the changes to the statute give ample time to register plaintiff's firearms with the state police, the changes to the requirements for the transfer, sale, purchase, and importation began on effective date of the bill, January 10th, 2023, resulting in the loss of fundamental rights as per that date. While the defendants rightly argue that monetary damages do not qualify as, as irreparable, they fail to consider the the owners of gun stores and other litigants who suffer monetary damages due to commerce are not necessarily included in the exempted person's category and therefore have their personal rights limited. This causes a perplex perplexing legal issue that may restrict their ability to pursue their current profession. So you have me, a firearms instructor. Um, if I was to be holding tactical classes, that might impact me. Um, 
gun stores, they cannot sell their current inventory that doesn't belong to the store owner, it belongs to the store. So what are gun stores to do with their inventory that they have on hand? One could argue that they could sell it out of state, but trying to sell it to other individuals expressly out of state and only out of state would hurt them monetarily or for a significant period of time. As stated in uh, Mark Hindu, when a violation of constitutional rights has been alleged, a further showing of irreparable injury is not required if what is at stake is not monetary. That is uh, McKindu v. Illinois High School Association, which was uh, heard in 2015. The court finds the plaintiffs will suffer irreparable injury if an injunction does not issue. Number three, plaintiff has no adequate remedy at law. In Huff v. Weber, which came about in 1990, the court found that an adequate remedy at law is which is one which a clear, complete, and practical and efficient to the ends of justice and its prompt administrations to the equitable remedy. Uh, furthermore, the injury of the restriction of fundamental rights is one that's continuing in nature. Remedies at law are inadequate and injunctions should be imposed. For these reasons, the court finds the plaintiffs have no adequate remedy at law. So, that's the third argument that they've won on. Number four, plaintiff is likely to succeed in the merits of its claim. Now, it should you should know that this temporary restraining order was not was filed in state court. It was not filed in federal court, and it was filed not as a Second Amendment issue, but it was filed as a due process issue. So the due process issue is um, it, Tom DeVore said that hey, you know the uh, we didn't get our three readings. They snuck it into this other bill. This, um, you know, should not be allowed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the court wrote that in the Illinois Constitution, Article 4, Section 8D, for failure to comply with the sim single subject rule, Article 4, Section 8 of the Illinois Constitution provides that pertinent part bills, except bills for appropriation and for the codification, revision, or rearrangement of laws shall be confined to one subject. The single subject rule ensures the structured and well-informed debate and passage of bills limiting each bill to a single subject or so each legislator can, be, can better understand and more intelligently debate the issues presented by a bill. That was People v. Cervantes in 1999. However, the legislature may not choose to, uh, topics so broad that the rule is evaded at a meaningful constitutional check on the legislator's actions. People v. Beauclair in 2002. So he goes on to, uh, with a lot more of this. Uh, the court has reviewed the public record and finds that the stature or the nature of the bill is confusing at best and might hinder the debate regarding the bill if it were allowed. In Beauclair, which was cited by both parties, the Illinois Supreme Court states clearly the subject of the act is determined by first looking at its title. Okay, now the judge goes on to make uh, several other points in relation to this point that they're likely to succeed on the merits of the case. And um, it's very long. I'm going to link it down below. I'm just going to read part of it to you. Due to the lack of procedural compliance of the defendants, the court is left with nothing to conclude what might be compelling public purpose of this legislation. In oral arguments, the defendants suggested that the goal of the legislation was to reduce firearms deaths and mass shooting casualties. However, they offered no evidence that the individuals in their newly created class, based on training and experience, were any more or less likely to commit these crimes, nor did they provide evidence that the individuals excluded from this class were more likely to commit crimes. The court finds the plaintiffs have shown a likelihood of success in relation to the Equal Protection Clause of the Illinois Constitution and that the defendant's use of criteria, especially those that is not evenly applied uh, violates the face of the Supreme Court's findings in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. So, <clears throat> let me break, now that we've gone over all that, let me break this down easy for everybody else that's concerned. The, one question that everybody asks is, does this affect me? 
Well, if you were one of the 864 people that put their name on this case, then it does. However, if you are not one of the 864 people that put their name on this case, it does not right now. <clears throat> um, again, we are, this is just a temporary restraining order against those 864 people that Tom DeVore has uh, represented in court. It, they will be due in court next February 1st at uh, 9 30 a.m so until then we will see what continues to go on and what other statements we hear from tom devore accuracy firearms or any of the other individuals that are party to this suit okay so there are other groups that are filing lawsuits uh, both in state and federal court regarding this and uh, they would be the goa um, the FFLIA, the Second Amendment Foundation, Firearms Policy Coalition, and the ISRA. Notice I said nothing about the NRA. The NRA does not care about your rights anymore. So I would avoid donating to them. If you are able to donate, I would recommend making a donation to one, of, one or more of those groups because they are the ones that are fighting for all of our rights. I will have more information for you guys as this um, develops and as more information on it comes out. Right now it is 5.30 on <clears throat> Friday evening, so a lot of this was just released. Uh, I haven't, I've had a brief chance to go over um, what the judge wrote down, but I haven't had a whole lot of time to dissect it. Uh, so anyways, this is just, you know, first update out of po probably going to be several. Um, but at least we know now that based on Tom's arguments that they didn't file this correctly, we're likely to, to succeed on many counts. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, stay safe and have fun on the range.